Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Players Take, episode 88. I am your host, Justin DeSimone, joined by my two co-hosts and League of Legends degenerate, Montreal Rice. And, as always, the Queen Supreme herself, Tiara Atari. How are you guys doing on this fine, fine Wednesday? Uh, tired, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. It's, uh, it's only been a two-day week for me, and I already feel like I've been working for like two weeks straight. It's, uh, yeah. But we got some more listener feedback this week about the nicknames. But we got nicknames for all three of us this time instead of just me. So uh, this is from somebody named D. Grand. Uh, so we got a nickname for Tiara. The Queen Impostress, which is a reference to Among Us, I suppose. Um Feels a little compliment or if that's not, you what? know. Yeah. Is it a compliment saying that I'm a good imposter <laughs> in Among Us? <laughs> you know, in which case I accept. Is yeah. it uh, you know, or is it a bad nickname is saying mm. that I am an imposter, in which case mm. I don't accept it? It's a fair question. I don't know the answer to it. Uh, in terms of the longevity of this nickname, though, you're not going to be playing Among Us forever. So, to me, it kind of feels like one that... Um, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I've been playing Candy Crush forever. Mm-hmm. So, and Among Us is way more interesting than Candy Crush. Okay. I actually haven't played Among Us lately, though. Yeah. Uh, surprise, surprise. I've been trying to do more console gaming. Okay, well... But- all right, who's who's the other ones? All right, so mine uh, that they put was uh, the charming colonizer for civilization. Uh, I'm I, I don't I don't like this one personally. <laughs> I I like it. I like it. Uh, I I thoroughly. You just say I don't like it. Colonizer. <laughs> it's a nitro uva. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, it is a word that I I, I use a lot. In, in my, so I, I I like the word. Um, colonizer I, doesn't dr umar say that to... he's a colonizer right dr umar oh no you know, <laughs> you know, honestly, no you know, honestly, there's no way no i, I can't like... i can't no there's too no, much honestly, there... i don't no i don't feel like he's i don't feel like no uh, I, I didn't, didn't even that look that at it that way. way i didn't even look at it that way so montrell <laughs> said that no i'm i'm no. axing this nickname no oh, this one's oh, dead i don't i don't i don't think he says that that's exact that's exactly what i meant it though there's no way. I call, no. I call, I call Shane Hep colonizer all the time. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. We got Montreal. We got a few for the for Montreal here. So uh Wait, hun- but no, it was a double entendre, because you know you play civilization, you know, you you call it Un- understood. Understood. But I don't want it. I don't want it. I I I uh reject this one. I reject it. Full force. All right. Montrells. <laughs> these are these are great. Hun Hun Bun. That's the first one. Cutie Pie <laughs> or Sweet Cheeks. <laughs> Did your girlfriend write these? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Can't confirm uh, nor deny these I mean, allegations. I I don't know, so um, I will hope yeah. so, because the alternative doesn't sound too good. <laughs> That's a fair point. <laughs> so I honestly will hope, you know. All right. <laughs> Listeners, if this wasn't Montreal's girlfriend, please stop hitting on Montreal. All right? <laughs> just, just just, don't. Please don't. Thank Wait, you. you got hit on last time by Dill, the Dill guy. <laughs> the Dill guy. <laughs> The deal guy. Yep. Who's the deal guy? He called Pickle man. He called him. Uh, he called Justin Juicy D. <laughs> Where did the D come from? I don't know. Is it from D Simone? Yeah, I, guess I think so. so yeah. yeah, yeah, but it was like D E E, like D. You know? Yeah. So I don't know. All right. I'm enjoying these nicknames. Keep sending them in, guys. You can do that at the players' sake on Twitter, or you can send them to uh, theplayerstake01 at gmail.com. So please keep sending those in. These have been fun to read. Um, All right. So for those of you who haven't listened before, this 
is our weekly show where we talk about video games, video game news, and other topics pertaining <laughs> to video games. We post at 6 a.m. Central Time on Fridays on oh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, oh, Stitcher, and your favorite podcast app of choice. We are also on YouTube, 6 a.m. Central Time on Mondays. If you want to check us out there. All right. Is there anything you guys want to talk about before we get into it? Uh, congratulations to LeBron James for getting another ring. <laughs> Yep. You know, I just feel like we just not talking about LeBron enough. You know, I just feel like that. it was like it was like when he won, and then the next day it was like nothing. I checked the trending topics on Twitter. It was no one cares. It made me made me very upset. I, I do I do have one thing. This happened last week, I think, or but I in do between. Love Jimmy Butler as well. Um, so it was it was it was a little thing that happened. It was minor, but I want to see how y'all feel about it because it has to do with both basketball and football. Yeah. So last week when LeBron lost, he walked up the uh the court early, like maybe like two minutes early. Mm-hmm. Uh and then also last week, um Tom Brady lost or he was yeah. losing and he walked up the court or the field rather, maybe mm-hmm. about like a minute or two earlier or something like that. I don't know how how long. Um but the uh the talks around the surrounding two events were completely different. Everyone was calling LeBron James a baby. He's being a whiny little bitch. Oh my God, I can't believe he walked off the field. That's not what Michael Jordan or Kobe would do. Yeah, okay. And, Give me a break on Michael <laughs> Jordan, guys. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, yeah sure, dude. And then, and then Tom Brady did it, and everyone's like, yeah, I mean, because he plays for the Bucks right now, right? What a competitor. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I so, know the narratives, bro. Either, I know the narratives. Either so, they didn't say okay. anything or they're just like they're just like all right. So there's multiple angles to this, okay? First of all, there's the white versus black narrative, right? Yep. Yep. Which one hundred percent has some credence, definitely. I, I I think. But as somebody who's very ingrained in football culture, this is also just a Tom Brady thing where anything Tom Brady does, it doesn't matter what he does, he's fucking immune to criticism for it, you know? Uh, like the fact that he was like pseudo a Trump supporter at a certain point in time, nobody really cared. Nobody really cared. <laughs> and it just it. faded into obscurity <laughs> and no one talked about it. So, and you know, already, honestly, he would have visited the White House had it not been someone screwing around him. He absolutely. would have absolutely visited 100%. the White House. Oh so, my God. Yes. This is a Tom Brady All thing. All the Patriots he, are like Trump supporters. He, he's, he's, he <laughs> always gets this treatment where someone else is fiery on the sideline like, oh, I don't know, Des Bryant or Odell oh, Beckham. What? They're fiery on the sideline, yelling at their teammates, screaming at coaches. Oh, they're a problem. They're toxic. They're poison in the locker room. Tom Brady does it. Oh, he's such a competitor. Oh, my God. <laughs> these, these players must – the leadership is unbelievable. Go into your coach and oh, – fuck <laughs> fucking no. Okay, it's bullshit. It's all a bunch of bullshit. LeBron, mad respect. You can walk off the, the fucking court whenever you want, bro. You've won four championships. Hey. Fuck all these people. They can go suck a dick. They're not Three you, different okay? teams, by the way. I mean, Three but different the, but teams. Here's the thing, though. But here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. It's 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 a different sport. Like Yeah, um, that's true. Right that's now, what I'm talking about with the culture like, part like, of like it. Yeah. Like, well, I'm not even talking about the culture. I'm just saying, like, okay, like, basketball. First first of all, we talk about the finals, right? Yeah. Like, you're not talking about the Super Bowl. We're talking mm-hmm. about the finals, right? So that's one. That's one thing. But then also speaking, because basketball is so close, like it's such a fast paced game Mm -hmm. that him, every second him being out matters. Like, you know, two minutes is a long time to be out, you know, whereas in football, you know, football is kind of slower paced. And once you get down by a certain margin, like you Mm -hmm. already know your team is lost, like. Yeah. You know, so so depending on what the what what his team was down, if they was down by twenty one or something like that, and it's two minutes left, like we mm-hmm. done. Like I'm going back to the locker room. You know, it's no way we can come up and we can win it. You know, in twenty one, you know, gain twenty one points in two minutes. I mean, you don't know? say that, Tom Brady. He came back down. He came back from twenty eight three in the Super Bowl. I mean, possession changes and in X Y Z. I mean, yeah, but I know. But I'm, what I'm saying is, you know, that's just no, you know, I, I get, I get what you and mean. A, and yeah. a, and a, and, a, and a regular season game. Like you talking about regular season game versus the finals. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, it's, yeah, it's just, it's, not, it's different. 
Tom Brady is like a golden boy in the NFL circles. Because, and... maybe that's the, because of the problem walking off the court two minutes in, in yeah. a regular season game, nobody cares. Yeah. But that's but it's the finals, and that's why. Yeah. Right. So, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I think it's <clears throat> unjust treatment. I think it's inconsistency. I'm sure those, like, pundit shows where they scream at each other all day, like, uh, for, and, you know, ESPN First Take or fucking Shannon and, and what, uh, Skip Bayless yeah. screaming at each other, yeah. whatever the fuck, yeah. Those shows, yeah, I'm sure they were really consistent on their opinions between Tom Brady and I LeBron James. I didn't see the shows. I just really saw, consistent. I just saw I'm the sure. tweets. Well, I will say, I will have to say, I will say Shannon Sharp is pretty, um, 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 Unbiased. He's pretty, he, yeah, he's pretty unbiased in his, his, yeah, uh, I'm sure Skip Bayless lauded Tom Brady <laughs> and, and just Skip made Kenny, LeBron eat shit. Skip can't even I'm, congratulate I'm sure. LeBron James for winning the championship because he, oh, he, what a, what a, what a, what a fucking classy he, guy he is. He, he, uh, <clears throat> he really didn't think LeBron James was going to get the championship. <laughs> Yeah. I like Skip Bayless though, you know. I, I do too. I think he's really cool. Sometimes his, his opinions are really bad, I like know. uh, like uh, <laughs> Stephen A. Him and yeah, Stephen A. are like that. <laughs> no. Skip okay. Bayless. Look, the, when the two of them were on the same show together, <laughs> screaming at each other, it was comedy gold. I will say, it was it was straight up comedy gold. That there was a reason to but, watch but those shows and, at that but point. But Skip and Shannon are a much better duo. Yeah, you think they bounce off each other? Then better? Steve, yeah, then, then Steve and Skip. Yeah, they do bounce off each other uh, really well. I actually like the show. No, uh, it's just when Skip started talking shit about Dak Prescott when he came out about his mental health issues over the off season. I just, I, I never liked the guy, anyways. But man, he was, yeah. I didn't even see that. What was his hot take? I didn't see that either. Yeah, so Dak Prescott's brother commits suicide in the oh, off season. Sh- oh and shit! His really? Mo- and his and his mother died. Um, what uh, the fuck? Before the NFL draft, so he's had a rough fucking year. Uh, so he comes out before week one and is like talking about how difficult that was for him and that he's had mental health issues and like he wasn't keeping up with his conditioning and shit like because he was having such a hard time with everything. So yeah. Skip Bayless comes out and is like he he wasn't a dick, but he goes he, he this was his take. He's like he's like you got to be a leader in that situation. You can't say that publicly. You're making yourself look weak or whatever. And it's like bro. You're like 60, dude. Like, <laughs> shut the fuck up, okay? We, our generation, is not afraid to talk about our mental health. Like, we all understand mental health issues, okay? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, Bayless, you can take that and keep that in 1960, okay, dude? Like, <laughs> that opinion, just keep it over there because none of us care. So, I don't know. I don't like the dude, but, you know, I, I, I understand why he's successful. He, it's because he says shit like that. He riles people up, so that's the point, right? I'm talking about him right now, so yeah, exactly. It's working, <laughs> but he be having them players actually want to fight him. He do. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. Like, he, I, especially the basketball players. He keeps himself too. in pretty good shape, though, from what I've seen. Right? Mm, he does. Yeah. Yeah. So. You no, know, his his shoe game. His shoe game, nice too. Yeah, I'm about to say his shoe game is really nice. Mm, he has a, he has you know. nice some nice kicks. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, yeah. Well, congrats to LeBron. Like uh, Mark <coughs> said, four championships is nothing to sneeze at, uh, especially on three different teams. And weren't the Lakers like horrible, even with him oh, on it, like last yes, year? Yes. Yes. How did they fucking, win? They this came out of nowhere terrible. for me. This no, came no, out of nowhere like, for me because the last time I heard about the Lakers, they were horrible, like absolutely dreadful. So yeah, he was he was injured and they couldn't carry. And okay. then I, I think they didn't have AD last year, did they? Uh, uh um. No, no, this is the AD first year. Yeah, so they then they got AD, so um, mm-hmm. that was really good, and and they got the White Howard this year too, right? Or was yeah, that last that year? Was, yeah, no, that was this year, but that wasn't really no game changer. Yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember when Dwight Howard was on the Magic and he was in the finals and uh, got his ass beat. <laughs> Yeah, that that's when, that's when that we put up that super. That's when we put up that Superman cape because I'm used to yep. wear that shit all the time. I remember that. Yep, that was a long time ago, dude. So holy shit, we're old. All right. <laughs> yep. All right. Let's get into what these old people are playing, like we always do every week. Uh, who wants to go first this week? Uh, I guess. I, oh, okay. You can go first, Yar. Do you want to go first, Mantra? No, nah, ladies first. No, nah, me and Ma, I think Mantra. And I, I was, I was, I was saying, I was gonna yeah. say, ladies first, first. <laughs> Fair, go for it, ladies first. Um, but no, in reference to Mantra. Mm-hmm. Ladies first. I, 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 
I literally said that. Montreal, stop being such a dick, dude. Oh my God. Jesus Christ. You are bringing this podcast down with your, your rudeness. Goodness gracious. Tiara, please go ahead. Um, <laughs> assholes. Both of y'all assholes. <laughs> yeah, so I've been playing Call of Duty, Modern Warfare. I've actually been consistent, like, within mm-hmm. the last, like, couple of weeks. Yeah. <clears throat> And I have seen my skill increase. Are you winning games? I... No, but I'm coming close. I mean, okay. we're, playing, we're playing duos. Okay. I got to like third, I think. Okay. So you're getting close. I mean, yes, if you're consistently but, making like top 10, you're going to win one at some point. But the, hi- but the highlight is that, you know, I wipe a whole team by myself. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Feels good, doesn't so it? I'm- so I'm getting good. I'm getting good. Yes. Are you going to start I, streaming? I, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. We, 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 that's way, way too early now. Way too early. But that's I am way too getting early? good. Okay. Um, okay. Um, you know, getting my strategies and stuff together. I'm telling you, man. Give us about a month. Start streaming. Every time a girl streams, they make like a billion dollars on streams. Easy. Easy money. No, I, <laughs> she won't need us anymore, Mom. So I'm going to kick us to the curb. And, I know, right? The player's <laughs> take? What was that? Oh, I don't know what that is. Yeah, I'm for sure trying to like streak. Cause see, see, I mean, I want people to look at me because I'm good at the game, not mm-hmm. you know. I mean, I'm- it's that the other the second part is unfortunate territory. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, Winner. well, if me being a girl gets me in the door, I hope you stick around. Mm-hmm. You know, because I'm good. There you go. No, I mean, okay. it, it definitely works. Uh, what's her name? Pokemon or whatever? She's a diamond po- player. Pokemon. I'm yeah, surprised she, she hasn't gotten sued by Nintendo yet. Yeah, she's a diamond player in fucking League of Legends, and that's like the top 5% of, or top 10% of players out, out of the whole damn thing to get into diamond. So she's actually really good. If I start playing League of Legends tomorrow, I'll teach you how to play. <laughs> I mean, I would need a PC though, right? Yeah. Yeah, you need a PC. Well, yeah. yeah, currently. They're coming out with a mobile version soon. Yeah. But it's not um, gonna it's not gonna be linked up to the PC it, version. No. Is it is it like um graphic intensive? No. You, no, can, you can play this on the shittiest all. laptop ever. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's like World of Warcraft. You, okay, you can play okay, it on so, fucking anything. Like Okay, I should I should I should be able to play my work laptop then. Yeah. yeah. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so really um been happy with myself um i just want to get confident enough to like really like start playing solos and oh that's hard yeah and br like, solos is a beast in in br it's kind of a it's kind of a so, mental mental hurdle yeah that's hard to i get did over. play solos and i did kill somebody um because i saw them first mm-hmm. yeah. um but it's just I don't know. I just get so much anxiety around being by myself. Like, yeah. I sep- like having separation yeah. anxiety. Right. Well, you don't, no one's covering you. Like, if you fuck up, no one's going to pick you up. You know, like, you, I know. But it's like, yeah. you know, I just have to tell myself, you know, um, you know, anybody you see, they the enemy because you, you by yourself. So anybody yeah. you see, they the enemy. Um, uh, well, if Apex ever does solos, which I know they won't, but if they ever do solos, I might actually play in that game, like play the play the solos. Cause I'm pretty gung ho in that game. Like I, I just fucking, if I hear a gunfire, I run towards it. I don't give a shit. Well, yeah, so. Apex. I feel like you have a chance because players have abilities, right? So they have right. certain abilities mm-hmm. that cover their backs and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. it's a little bit more. Well, I camping, feel... camping's not really a thing in that game for the most part either. Um, so yeah, that game is super fast paced. Yeah. <laughs> right, which I yeah, which would really do away with some of the anxiety, you know, for me, um, playing by myself. Um... Yeah. Well, um, I don't know. The anxiety <laughs> comes from when I, I see people, or if it's like a lot of people. Okay. It's like a hot zone, you know. That's where, it, and it's just like I'm just so used to like running with people. Yeah. So, and I like, and actually, but and honestly, that's what I I like the most. I I like playing, you know, with people. But yeah. I do want to get. I do want to also start, you know, playing solos as well. But yeah, that's all I've been playing. Alright. Alright. Uh, uh, well, side note off of that, um, I think 
PUBG oh, yeah. is releasing a fucking uh, what you call it, new map. Oh with yeah, the, with the volcano really? in the middle. Can you play? Can you play a map in PUBG without the bot? I don't think so. I don't think so. No. You they, have to, they, like, you have to they, do a why game. are there bots? They're trying to fill up player space. Well, I gotta. We gotta look this up, Montreal. This happened months no, ago, so I, I don't heard, know if the bots I, are no, still I there. Heard, I heard that there were bots because people were complaining that PUBG was hard or something, and so they try to even it out. Or I think that's part of it. I also uh, that, think that, player that is true. Low. That is but true. But I don't. But I didn't. I mean, but PUBG was never hard. Like, that was the reasoning they gave for the bots when they came out was that they wanted to put bots into uh, newer player games to fill the lobby, mm -hmm. so that they weren't matched up against. People I think have been playing since the game came out, you know. Yeah, I think if me and Justin were to play, we wouldn't get bots because we're higher level. So uh, our MMR is high. Well, there was, there was PUBG. Well, yeah. it, it goes by well, how many games you played and everything like that. Yeah, so right. we, we have like we play a lot of games, so it wouldn't level us up. It wouldn't match us up with players who only have like two or three games under their belt. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, low key, I want to get back into PUBG. But the reason the bots were such a fiasco when they came out is that streamers, streamers were running into bots in their games. Yeah, like people that were highly skilled were running into bots, and it was a, it was. But see, uh, I, we don't know if those streamers are playing on their Smurf accounts or not, though. So that's the that's, that's another true. that's another thing they could have yeah. been doing that to get like content numbers, you know, so they can mm -hmm. bitch and moan. Um, because yeah. honestly, the way PUBG is now is because of the streamers, or I, don't, yeah. I wouldn't say because all streamers. A lot of streamers though. We're complaining about how slow paced the maps were. But I remember Dr. Disrespect was like praising fucking Kerrigan and like he, he came back and played it a little bit. He was play, praising how fast paced some of the maps were. But then, you know, everybody but I just like went, the slower pace. Like I like the strategy behind PUBG. Like we do too. It's Kerrigan was when we say fast paced, it was fast paced for PUBG. It wasn't like Call of Duty yeah. or like it wasn't it's not, like, no, it's not like Apex yeah. or no, it's still PUBG. It it's was, just the map was more condensed. Yeah, so. it was still like strategy yeah. involved in it. We still had to, you know, make certain plays and do move around certain so that's areas. That's why it excelled because you were running into people more often, but it wasn't like constant. You yeah, know, you, yeah. you could still avoid people if you wanted to. That was still a strategy that worked on the map. It's just the map was so small that you would constantly hear gunfire so you would have to constantly strategize your routes like where you were gonna go mm -hmm. based on that gunfire and then you'd even see people sometimes and it's like do i want to fight here or do, do i want to kind of avoid and like go around you know the gas is coming or something like that and on top it's of that just, the gas was felt, uh, faster as well the gas it felt like a perfect pace for PUBG that the other maps just didn't hit because yep. there's just so much downtime on the other maps you yeah know? so yeah. and it, it was just, it was just really weird. I mean, I may download it and play it just to see how everything changed, but I'm I'm not sure yet. Um, but I've been playing uh, League of Legends for a little bit, and I finally got my my niche back. Uh, it's just I finally figured out what's going on. So, mm -hmm. uh, with my League of Legends games, and I will say, I do blame myself off like off stream or like off this thing. Mm -hmm. I do blame myself a lot. Um, I was having issues like farming after I gank. I wouldn't, I would hesitate on certain things like, oh, should I go hit my teammate or should I go back farming? And I'll end up getting like lower levels because jungle is like a struggle. Um, but another thing I've been noticing, I've been having consistent, consistent wins is because uh, I've been pinging my teammates to not fucking team fight. There's this, there's this fucking di disease going around in low elo, guys. You gotta watch out. If you're anywhere between the the iron and bronze or platinum tier and you team fight you have this disease it's called degenerate fuck team fight is itis where you don't know how to fucking team fight at all and you just yeah. randomly team fight for no fucking reason where there are no objectives on the map so that's what a lot of people do and then i'm like why are we team fighting near the dragon and the dragon's already taken there's no reason to team fight there and it's 4v5 i'm split pushing i'm way up top of the map split pushing trying to take towers and they're like oh we better team fight right here at the baron pit or the dragon pit and i'm like why why you do that don't do that and they end up dying so i noticed that if i start spam pinging people to back off they won't do it because they'll hesitate they're like why is he spam pinging me that and we end mm -hmm. up winning the game so i've been doing that a lot probably got reported a couple times for spam pinging but i've been winning my games consistently mm -hmm. um uh, I've been playing another game of plans Fallout New Vegas. I don't know why. I just had the urge to play this game. And I put oh, like maybe that. you say what? 
I saw you playing it. Yeah, uh, I've been playing it. I probably put like twenty six hours into it. I got this game on PC. I bought it Damn. on Xbox. Yeah, <laughs> I got this game on PC. Uh, but I played it on Xbox because I didn't feel like re-downloading <laughs> on my PC. Um, <clears throat> so I've just been playing. I got all the DLC for like fifteen bucks. Like the whole the game and the DLC for like fifteen bucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and man, this game is still good. Like the dialogue and the the writing is still like top notch. I mean, obviously some of the gameplay is dated, but it still kind of holds up. Uh, but yeah, man, like the the quest trees that you can do in this game is fucking crazy. Like I put my speech to all the way to one hundred just to see yeah. how much I can, like how many quest trees I can go in just by speech alone. And there are so many things I skipped and discovered just because my speech is at like one hundred. I can talk to people and get like extra dialogue out of them and all this other shit like that. And it's just crazy that they did this game. Like I think their time frame for making this game was like two and a half years or some shit like it's yeah. crazy and even the dlc has like really good writing and uh quest management and, and everything like that so it's, it's just really good um but the last game i'll i'll wait for you to give your opinion on that because i've been playing that too so i'll take it over uh, to yeah i mean we can get into it I, i've been I, i've been playing the civilization six uh, I don't have much more to say about that, but uh, the other one is still still playing Genshin Impact, which Montreal picked up yesterday. Um, so Montreal, how, how's your uh, experience been with this game so far? I guess? All right, I'll admit uh, I was wrong about the game. I thought it was going to be um, some free to play trash that was like a Breath of the Wild wild ripoff. Um, I actually. I played like uh, I played it yesterday. I probably got like five hours into it, but I can definitely see I did the first three dungeons. Uh, so mm-hmm. you get your you get um, what's that guy's name? I can't remember their names off the rip, but I got uh, Lisa, Kaya, Kaya, Kaya and Lisa. Lisa yeah. yeah, I got Kaya and Lisa added to my party. Um, <clears throat> so I like the combo. I can see the combo potential, and that's why I'm continuing to play it. Um, besides that, I just think the combat itself is what sets this game apart from like yep. other free to play games. And yep. even even though it copied the Breath of the Wild, uh, you know, format, I like it. I say this, I, I tweeted this out, like the first five hours of the game, I enjoyed way better, way better than the first five hours. Because I remember my first five Dude, hours of Breath of the Wild. The combat in this game is way better than Breath of the Wild. It's but, not even fucking close. But like, it's not just the combat, it's, just, it's good, stuff to... It's, this is a good game? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's free to play and it's a good game. They have actual fucking dungeons. Uh, <laughs> and like... Uh, the first five hours of my gameplay, like that's why I compared it to when I said this tweet. I said that I like it better than the Breath of the Wild because my first five hours of Breath of the Wild was absolutely fucking horrendous. Like yeah. I, I don't know if on my past couple episodes in the past, I've expressed how much I did not like the first couple hours of Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild is an okay game. I just came to the conclusion that it's not for me, um, but it is a good game because like a, a lot of other people like it and they have very good reasons why they like it, and I can see those reasons. Mm-hmm. It's just not for me. Whereas Genshin Impact striked all the boxes that Breath of the Wild didn't. It has the open world that I like for Breath of the Wild. It has the survive, like not the survival factor, um, but the combat is updated. Like it's yeah. updated. It's not that same Nintendo 64 Z targeting shit. It's like really updated. Um, mm-hmm. It's like Tales of the Wild or uh, Tales of the Wild. Yeah, Tales, I don't even think there's a lock on in this game. There's not. There's not a lock on. Yeah. Um, but it still has that Tales of Vesperia aspect gameplay to yep. it. Yeah. Um, like you, and then like I like you said, the combo, the the, uh, the elemental system is so deep. So I didn't yep. know when you like just on Breath of the Wild, if you shoot arrows into the grass, fire arrows, everything lights on fire. But if you use like your wind spell, you can cast like a wind fire tornado type deal. Like, yep. and you can do that with different other elements as well. You can mix and match it, and that shit's like fucking cool as fuck to me. Um, yep. Uh, so I did get a taste of the free to play aspect of it, uh, the wishes and stuff like that. So I can definitely see where it's going and where that can be an issue. I didn't get it, uh, to the stamina part yet uh, that I did, that you told me about and that I saw on Reddit. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't get that far yet, but, uh, I'm pretty sure that's going to be coming up in the next couple hours, but just based off pure gameplay alone and how the game is structured and the story and everything of that nature, if we're comparing it to like Breath of the Wild, cause a lot of people are, I like this game more because uh, first of all, well, the graphics aren't on power. Get Breath of the Wild. I can't say that Breath of the Wild still looks gorgeous, even for a Switch game. Um, mm. uh, 
The story though is like straight to the point. I know what the fuck I'm doing. I know why I need to do it. And that's what it is. Where this Breath of the Wild, it's like, why am I waking up? <laughs> Go find this guy. Then well, this you guy can go straight to the final boss. So the story is like irrelevant. Because yeah. Of that. Like yeah. it doesn't even matter what you do. You can. Yeah, exactly. And, um, I don't know. It's just something about Breath of the Wild that didn't hit for me that this game hits like. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's there's a deep RPG in this game that obviously that Nintendo is not going for with with a game like Zelda. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 element to it makes it so much better for me. Is that I think the Breath of the Wild comparisons are kind of like not, they're not really hitting the mark because the, the okay sure yeah the game's got a fucking stamina system you can climb things and there's cooking like and it's open world <laughs> okay that oh get yeah, that that makes it Breath of the Wild like no it's very dissimilar from Breath of the Wild to be honest like it's an actual RPG it has RPG mechanics you have a party like there's all sorts of shit in this game that is completely different from breath of the wild in my opinion and um i i i hearken it more towards like uh, tales. tales game yeah. yeah honestly it feels more like a natural evolution of what that series is trying to do than anything zelda's done like i i, I think they took some pieces from zelda and they took the right things from zelda i think and that's working for them so I don't know. I I do. Yeah, I'm still playing this game. I'm I'm honestly pretty obsessed with it. Actually, like I think it's a fantastic game on its own. The fact that you can play it for free and play through the entire story without paying a dime is an insanely good deal. Like you're getting a forty to sixty hour JRPG basically for free. <laughs> like you don't have to pay anything. Like the the pay the paying part of it is its own conversation. And there is a lot of predatory shit that this game is doing. But the thing is, is if you are uh, A, strong-willed, or B, not interested in the gotcha or any of the other stuff, you can completely ignore that shit and play through the story, and you'll be perfectly fine for the most part. Um, so the game, I think, is designed w smartly in that way to get people in who would normally not be interested in a free-to-play kind of game like this yeah. because of the fact that you can play through so much of it for free. Like, you can wander the entire world. There's no gating with the world for the most part. Like, the activities eventually are gated by a stamina system, but the first time you do these activities in the game's storyline, they're free. You don't have to, like, use anything. There's no resources involved there, so um i yeah there, there's a deep conversation to be had with this game um i, I don't want to get into it like, yeah. on the show proper here but understand if you're into jrpgs and you like uh and you like breath of the wild even even if you like both of those things this game is a perfect kind of marriage of the two in my opinion um it is a chinese game so it's not i am calling it a jrpg but it's styled like a jrpg um, honestly think like they hired they, maybe they hired a uh jrpg team because yeah this game plays eerily similar it, it reminds me so much of tales yeah uh, it really it, it really does it's kind of crazy <laughs> yeah uh the voice acting is actually really good for yep. uh, for a jrpg um well i'll, I'll say that for a free-to-play game it's really good like the story is cohesive usually like these free-to-play games they don't really have a, they have something in the background but their main goal is to get you to spend money <laughs> but this game Honestly, like it's, I feel like I'm playing. I paid for a sixty dollar game. If like the gotcha yep. element wasn't there, like I would right. feel like I paid for a sixty dollar game. That's exactly my point. This game has the quality of a triple A sixty dollar game, but it's free to play. Yeah, you know, this so. this game, like you said, uh, off mic. I think this game. I see why you say you think this game can be the next standard for other games going forward. Uh, yeah. I can see the potential of this game. I don't think it's going to be as big as. Like Fortnite, but maybe overseas. Yeah, like this game yeah. might be bigger than Fortnite. I can see that. It can take. It could probably, uh, you know, um, Trump, grand fake 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 grand order. Like, yeah, I, in I the can, realm of gotchas, it's gonna be the one of the biggest, if not the biggest, in my yeah. Opinion. And the simple uh, fact that I can continue my what adventure. Is gotcha again. I know I said that time, but. It's, oh. the, it's like a it's like a capsule machine game where you're you're you roll for character. Basically, you get this currency that you roll for characters, and the characters have different rarities. It's just like a capsule machine. There's certain capsules in there that there's only one of, or something like that. They're like super rare. Yeah, like uh, Pokemon trading cards or something like that. You open up a booster pack yeah. and 
you or, may, yeah, something like that. Yeah, right. you may get a holographic card, you may not, or something like that. Yep. Um, it's the it's same kind of concept with this game. You can get five star or four star characters and, st and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> okay, okay, so like Fallout Shelter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, that's that's actually a good comparison. Yeah. Um, as far as character wise, yeah, that that's a good comparison. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I don't know. I think the game's really good. Um, as far as that. I mean, like I said, the gotcha aspects we probably get into like in a, a separate because you're working on the video for that, right? World exclusive. Yeah, I am. I am. <laughs> so I'm capturing footage right now. I haven't like done any work on a video yet, but I, I really am really want to do something for this game. Um, whether it ends up being a video or me and Montreal just do like a spoiler cast or something like that. I don't know yet. <laughs> it really depends on time, but. Um, I'm capturing footage just in case I do decide to go down the path of making like a full breakdown of this game. Um, Cause yeah, I find it that fascinating. Like it, it marries a lot of genres together that, cause this is one, there's one genre I feel like people are not really making comparisons to with this game. And to me, it's the pseudo MMO, like destiny, Anthem, mm. you know, Marvel's Avengers that honestly, out of all the things we've talked about, that is the genre that this game screams of more than any of them in my opinion. And you'll understand that what I'm saying there, Montreal, when you get deeper into the game, because uh, those mechanics will start to reveal themselves. They're very pseudo mmo -ish. The unfortunate part is a lot of that kind of gameplay is gated behind the resin stamina system that costs money to use beyond a certain amount. So okay. um, that's where the game, I think, needs to make some changes, but um, that's a deeper conversation. So um, I will say, too, uh, this game has been confirmed. It made $100 million in its first two weeks, uh, and that was how much the game cost to develop was $100 million. So they've already recouped development costs for this game in two weeks. Uh, so <laughs> this game is, is well on its way, in my opinion, to be in a billion-dollar game, probably. We're going to hear that in, like, a year, probably, maybe even less what time. What game is this? uh genshin impact uh, uh it's on playstation game. yeah it's on playstation 4 it's also on pc and mobile uh ios and uh android oh yeah so, speaking of that I... but it is not on xbox no no not. it is not Unfortunately. it looks like it's not coming to xbox either it's coming to switch though potentially wow what is the hate against microsoft for they didn't pay up yeah pretty much <laughs> <laughs> oh I mean, this isn't their realm, though, to be honest. Like, I know they tried with uh, Fantasy Star Online, too, and that was a good get, but I don't know. This just feels like Sony's wheelhouse is these yeah. kind of games. So I do like how I can continue my game mobile on mobile. I think that's really fucking cool. Uh, did you start playing on PS4, or are you I, playing I, on PC? I played on PS4. Oh, okay. So that is an unfortunate thing. You cannot play the game on mobile if you have a PS4 account. Oh, really? Yeah, they're separated because uh, Sony. So you know how Sony is. They probably man. fucking told them no. You, we can't let you do that. So, however, if you play on PC, you can play on mobile. Same account on both, and that is super cool. So, are you playing on PC or? or... Uh, I'm playing on PS4. I prefer it there. Um, okay. But I'm like thinking about PC because the fact that I can play it on mobile is very appealing. To me, but. <laughs> I don't think it's, you need that. I don't. I don't I, yeah, that's why I'm kind of. I think I'm gonna stick with PS4 for that reason. Is that I don't need to make this game like a game that I play when I'm I have my phone out and I'm doing nothing else. Like <laughs> I, I don't really. I don't need that. So you know, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is right now. I think and I'm just gonna keep playing on PS4. So I'm looking forward to PS5 though, uh, for for a game like this because it does have some performance issues on PS4. Yeah, I did notice that. Oh uh, really? it's getting kind of annoying the deeper I get into the game because when you have a lot of ability effects going off at the same time, there are severe frame drops. Um, mm. And yeah, so I'm looking forward to PS5. For That's kind of like, like Black Desert. Yeah. 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 I just feel That's like... That's a really good yeah, comparison, yeah. I think PS4 really struggles with these online games uh, that, that just take a lot of processing power. Because even with Civilization... It has the same problems online too. The game doesn't frame drop like in the moment, but turns like the game like fucking lurches, you know? Like it like it, it's like loading what the AI's doing between turns and then all of a sudden like the game just like it feels like it like had like a little mini implosion where it just like teleports to like a different part of the map real quick. And yeah, so 
I'm looking forward to the next consoles for sure. Um, which we're not not far off on uh, a month now, right? So. Yes, sir. Cool. Oh, uh, uh, it, speaking of that, did you get that? Char, did you get that uh, link I sent you on Twitter? About mm-hmm. okay, all right. I was just making and, sure. Yeah, I know, but I wasn't able to use it because I was teaching uh. <laughs> <laughs> at the dawn of time. Uh. So yeah, that was so, trash on my part. Unfortunate. Um, all right, cool. Let's move into the news. Um, speaking of uh, uh, modern warfare, um, we were talking about last week that uh, the game's file size was getting absurd. So there's a patch that is already out. Um, I'm pretty sure it came out yesterday or the day before. Uh, it's patch 1.28 that is going to allow PC modern warfare owners to uninstall specific modes if they do not want them in their game files. Uh, this apparently isn't coming to consoles, uh, but I'm not sure on that front. So if you do play on console, check that out next time you jump in the game. Uh, see if that's an option for you. If it isn't, that is really unfortunate. <laughs> um, but the game had gotten to the point where it can't fit on a 256 gig hard drive, which is insane. So this kind of like we were talking about last week felt like an inevitability, like they had to do this. So. Yeah, well, it's yeah. Well, the ridiculous. game is the game. I checked. The game is one seventy five. I think. Okay. Yeah. One hundred seventy five gigabytes. Um, still a lot. That's a fucking huge for a video game. Um. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's huge, and I, you know, I remember when Red Dead Redemption came out. Wasn't that like 100 gigabytes? It was 100, yeah. That was one of the first games that had two Blu-ray discs. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Blu-ray discs. Yep. That's so fucking ridiculous. That's yep. So, it was the first game to do that, uh, as far as I know. And then, uh, then it that started. Means that means that was the equivalent of like, like maybe like six regular discs? Oh. No. Uh, Way more than that. No, a DVD can hold, I think, 2.5 to 3 gigabytes. Uh, Blu-ray holds, like, 60 or 65. Uh, uh, so, yeah, no. It, it's, like... Yeah. They would have needed to send you a fucking <laughs> case of DVDs to hold uh, Red Dead Redemption. Red Dead Redemption. Dude, but do y'all remember that, though? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Four when, discs when, or when, something? When yeah. It would just, like, you would just be playing, and then randomly, in the middle of something, it would be, like, please insert disc two. And then you got oh. 12 other discs. And yep. then um, I remember the first game that had three discs. I think it was Final Fantasy. Uh, Final the- Fantasy Seven had three, yeah, or four. Yeah. Was it four or no? I, I want to say three. I want to say three, but some people it say four, three. but I think it was three. I think it was three. I, I know middle that was Gear back. That had- was back when it was on CDs, not yeah. DVDs. So I remember Metal Gear had two discs. So I remember that. Well, it became insanely common, um, even into the PS2 yeah, era. LA- I remember I had L.A. Noir yep. um, on 360, and I, that was two discs. Well, yeah, on 360, uh, Star Ocean. And it was um, one, and it was one disc. Was three, on, I think. On um, PS3, because PS3 had Blu-ray. Yeah, PS3 had Blu-ray. Yeah, 360 had that problem a lot um, as the generation wore on, that, yep. that generation, mm-hmm. because they were still they on have- DVDs. They were trying to use HD DVD, and that, that, they lost that, that format lo- War Sony 1. And yeah, so they were still using DVDs, and it was like as these games started to kind of balloon in size, like Xbox 360 games became comical. <laughs> yeah, it was, where you get like four discs fitting, or something. Mass Effect. Fitting. Mass Effect had two, three, three, two discs, two or three discs. Mass it Effect just, uh, two or three. It would just be like, and it would just be randomly. It would, be, it would just say enter disc one, enter yeah. disc two. Yep. Yeah. And and then sometimes it'll go enter disc two. Insert then it goes in back enter this one again. Go back to enter this one. Like, like, yeah. oh, right, go that's back awful. Mm-hmm. I think I think Mass Effect two or three had that issue. Um but then when you they uh they released a patch for Xbox three sixty where you can actually just download the entire game, like you know, burn it from your disc into your game. And then once you play it, it would just it would just play on that one disc, if that makes any sense. You all you well, need is that uh, one disc to read it. Yeah, I remember with uh, Metal Gear Solid 4, actually, on PlayStation 3, um, that game did this weird thing. I think it was one disc, but it did this weird thing where it would install the game, and it didn't do the whole game. Like, I remember after, like, the third chapter or something, the game told me to put the disc in to, like, install more shit, and it was like, what? Oh, yeah, so, it did do that. Yeah. That's, that's weird. It, 
it was annoying because yeah, it took thirty minutes to an hour for the game to like install, and I was like, I imagine if, they, if Modern Warfare was on DVD. It would take <laughs> it would take four Blu-rays. That's fucking insane. Yeah, yeah, isn't that a sign that these games are too big? Come on, guys. They just need the optimizer shit. They're not optimizing. Yeah, compress or something, right? Yeah, yeah. So, well, for those of you who play Call of Duty, hopefully that is a thing that is uh, available to you now, so you can get rid of uh, shit you don't want. Uh, for um, all right. for the PC players, uh, I did find this excellent program that helps you manage disk space, and it tells you exactly where the disk space is. It's called Wish Tree. It's a godsend. I just use it to clean my PC. So, um, then you know that there's free endorsement. <laughs> Where's our money, Wiz Tree? It's a free all program. Right. Okay. All right, Montreal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, let's move on. Uh, we got uh, a couple Microsoft stories, or actually Apple stories, Apple related stories here. Uh, so the first one is Microsoft um, has basically publicly said what their plans are with xCloud on iOS. Um, and Spencer, Phil Spencer, um, has insisted that they're going to be on iOS and their way they're going to do that is uh, something we actually talked about with Amazon Luna a couple of weeks ago is they're going to use a browser. You can, they're going to use the browser to s- allow you to stream games on iOS. So it's not just Epic. It's a lot of other companies are really trying to get around the Apple store issues that have the oppressive nature of that, that platform um, that many developers have issues with. So because uh, yeah, GeForce Now took themselves off of it. Um, Stadia really? also took themselves off of it. Um, XCloud was never on it because Microsoft refused to do their stupid little "you have to submit every game," and Luna's not going to be on it either. So um, Apple, at a certain point, I think they're going to have to acquiesce in some way, even if they win the case against Epic. Like they're, it's just becoming really commonplace for many of these developers of software, not just games are trying to find workarounds to some of the stuff on, on Apple's platform. So, um, but browser based cloud gaming, does that sound appealing to you guys? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, TR, do you even care about cloud gaming at all? Uh, it depends. Like, yeah. I do like to <laughs> sync my games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I would want it, I think it would be cool, um, if the Switch had cloud-based gaming. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be interesting. I think the xCloud, xCloud's appeal to me, if they can make this happen, right, is that you have Game Pass, right? Mm -hmm. And, and xCloud comes with that, right? And you're playing a game, whatever, say Halo, the next Halo, Halo Infinite. Um, and you're playing it on your console and then you leave and you go somewhere and you have your phone with you. And you can continue your save file in the streaming version of the game if you want, you know, mm-hmm. um, that that feels like the ultimate appeal for something like xCloud. These ones that aren't tied to a console like Stadia, um, Luna and GeForce Now, those are a little bit more kind of up in the air to me, like in terms of their appeal, because as services on their own, I don't know if they really have what it <clears> takes <throat> to be like robust enough right now yeah that's what a large group of people that's why i do like the x cloud because of that as you just mentioned like yeah it's not just a service it's like i have an xbox with me so cool i'm playing halo and then i'm like okay i'm about to jump on the plane or i don't know um about to go to the station to wait for my plane to, uh, to take off so i can play it on there on my phone while i'm just waiting you know i think that's really cool there was a video of somebody playing uh x playing like a doom on his refrigerator because he had the samsung refrigerator and that <laughs> that refrigerator has android platform yeah, on it the smart fridge yeah. yeah so he was uh playing doom on his refrigerator and uh i thought that was pretty cool so and he's like yeah this is just one of the things you can do with x cloud so I, th- I thought that was really cool <clears throat> fair enough all right let's move on to our second apple story um this is an update to the epic verse apple uh, court case. So a few weeks ago, uh, it's actually been a month or more. I feel like at this point, I think it was back in August. We talked about this. Um, so Epic filed a temporary injunction against Apple because Apple uh, was trying to revoke their developer tools and their development account 
on Apple platforms and that would have fucked over um, Unreal Engine um, being able to update that and distribute that on their platform. So they filed a, a temporary injunction, which the judge granted. And that same judge has now granted that that injunction is a is permanent. So um, Apple will not be able to retaliate through that development account uh, for Epic. So basically, the status quo is now Epic can't have Fortnite on the App Store unless they get rid of their in-game uh, payment system. And if they don't do that, they can't be on the platform. That's basically the status quo. Epic doesn't want to do that, and that's why they have the court case. So here we are. That's pretty much the status quo. Um, so, but the um, how do you guys feel? I guess about the the injunction being made permanent. Do you think that's the right call here? Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, simply because of that whole the fiasco that happened a couple months ago. Uh, it takes a lot of the the collateral damage out of this case. So now they can just fight each other. <laughs> right, right. It contains their fight to each of them. Yeah, it's a cage yeah. match now. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a USC cage match. Let's sell tickets. Um, That's yeah, what they so. should do. They should have, uh, what's his name, Tim Sweeney? Yeah. They should have Tim Sweeney <laughs> versus, yeah, yeah, versus the, C, the new CEO of Apple. I forgot his name. Uh, uh, is it uh, Wozniak? Or... Is it Wozniak? Is it? I don't. I don't remember. Yeah. There. Uh. So Tim Cook is not. The oh, CEO? that's right. She's is, right. Is Tim Cook? I think she's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tim Cook versus uh, Sweeney, UFC cage match, winner take all. I will watch that shit. Oh my god! I watched it too. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, dude. I totally watched that. <laughs> Fucking couple of nerdy tech guys who are CEOs <laughs> fucking wailing on each other in a, in a in an octagon. Like, yeah, sign me up. I think a lot of people would be into that. <laughs> but you know, we live in a civilized society where no one wears masks, so we we don't we don't do things like that, right? <laughs> All right, let's move on. Um, we got some, we got a bunch of PlayStation stories actually here, uh, this week. So first one, uh, happened last week, uh, late last week is that Sony announced and has gone live with a new PlayStation trophy system. Now, when I say new, it's not really different from what exists. They just adjusted the leveling, uh, scale and structure basically. So, uh, what was it before was that you would go from levels one to 99 and most people are probably in single digits because getting above 10 uh, takes a lot of time and a lot of gameplay. Um, and there are very few people probably above 20 or even 30. Um, you would have had to been playing from basically the PS3s when, when the system went live on PS3. So, uh, But Sony updated it. So it now goes from 1 to 999 levels. And everyone's uh, trophy level got adjusted based on this new system so i was level uh 16 about to be 17 uh on ps4 and now i am level 292 um tiara i think you said you were in the hundreds somewhere Mm -hmm. and what level were you at um before the switch over you were 10 okay Mm -hmm. so yeah she went into the hundreds and montreal i think you were like four or something right what are you at now i have no idea i gotta check it oh my god he's probably in the 50s or something um so my brother on the other hand he was in the 60s he was like 67 or 68 or something like that and he is now in the low 600s so wait um, on the old system he was in this in the 60s yes. your brother's yes, my, degenerate holy my shit brother, my brother is a playstation <laughs> lifer dude like he plays everything on playstation so okay okay that uh, makes sense so yeah he uh he's very upset though this is really like kind of created an uproar among the trophy community <laughs> why which is funny because, well, because the people that are on high, the higher end of the scale kind of got fucked by this. Like, because you heard what I said, right? He was 67 and he went kind of like in, in, a, in a way went down to like six, the early 600s, which equivalent would be like 60, you know? So the scaling on the high end is, is a lot higher to kind of make room for more, making it take more time to get to the higher levels. Um, yeah but i mean but who actually pays attention to that honestly there is a very dedicated group of people that are really fucking into this shit so 
I mean, I'm like halfway there. I don't. I kind of care, like, and I kind of don't care. I literally it's like, don't look at people and say, "Oh, you're a level sixty-five." Like, what does that mean to me? Yeah, right. I mean, it, I feel like it's a better system than the gamer score, but it still doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I mean, the gamer yeah. score is pretty much there. Like, it's just like that's your gamer score, and yeah. it's like I like that system more than the trophy system. In my opinion, but I mean, to get even your gamer store to get higher numbers, like to get 200 or 300 added to your gamer score, you gotta do like some platinum trophy type shit to get that. Or the um, well, it's a thousand per game on Xbox, isn't it? For most games, yeah, yeah, it's a thousand per game. Uh, I think they actually some of them are uncapped, like oh, MMOs yeah. and st- yeah. stuff like that, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the trophy system has problems because, and I'm sure the achievement system has similar problems in this regard, is that trophies aren't created equal. Like, a platinum for one game is not the same or really even close to the same as certain other games, you know? Yeah. Like, there's some games you can get a platinum in 15 minutes, and they literally make the game because of that, you know? And that's how they market the game, uh, to exploit people who are really into trophies and um there's other games where the platinum takes 200 hours you know and like it's just they're not equivalent so that kind of really makes this whole system a little bit like weak in that regard um because they're not you're not everyone's on an even playing field in that in in that space uh so to speak so i don't know um there is one thing coming with this on ps5 though is that you will be able to see progress towards trophies on the PSN interface or PlayStation interface, which is a huge fucking deal um, in my opinion, because that is kind of a big reason that a lot of trophies are hard to figure out because you don't really know your progress towards them. And it's up to the game to tell you what your progress is. Towards well, that's them. why I do like Xbox. I was about to say Xbox, that. Yep, Xbox tells uh, it you. It does tell you. In and most games. Been, and, and that's been a feature since 360, I think. Yeah. Right. So we're getting that with PS5. So that's that's a good thing. That's a really nice well, deal. Well, Sony is uh, the Apple in it, of the gaming <laughs> because <laughs> like how Apple, Apple, like how Apple just be releasing uh, features that other phones have been had. Basic shit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like I the mean, ability, like uh, the ability to remove your uh, apps from the home screen came with iOS 14, and I've been so happy. That's crazy. Like, they, I, they literally, still... before that, you, 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 every app that you downloaded was on your screens. Like, yeah, yeah, you had to so put annoying. it on your screen. Now I went from having like six screens to two screens. Yeah, yeah. that's nice. And they still don't have a close all button though. Like how you can close your all, all your apps, they still don't have that shit. It's very uh, annoying. Yeah, you gotta swipe, swipe, swipe. Yeah, you gotta swipe it all. Like you just can't click the close all button and close all your apps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so trophy hunters, check out your level. Um, you know, if there's any degenerates that listen to the show that are in like the five hundred, six hundred, <laughs> let us know. I want to know who you are. Did your brother listen to our show? Uh, no, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like yeah, you were you were cra- if you're if you're above six hundred, you were like you were really hot. I mean, dude, even I'm seventeen, right? I've been playing PlayStation since the PS3, like two thousand nine, I think, is when I started playing PS3, and yeah, I'm I was only at seventeen. Like, it's just yeah, it's it's nuts, and I actually do have a decent amount of platinums. Like, I'm not like completely, I don't completely ignore trophies, so. Um, to be in the 60s or 70s, like, man, you got to be playing a lot of fucking games and getting a lot of damn trophies. Um, so, all right. Uh, next story, also Sony related. So this one is, this is a public service announcement for all of you. <laughs> because, uh, so Sony has this PlayStation Store, right? They have it on PS4. They also have a web version of the PlayStation Store and a mobile version of the PlayStation Store. And if you are looking to buy games, both of those are preferable to the PS4's version of the PlayStation Store because it is fucking garbage. (laughs) So, however, that PlayStation Store sells games from the PS3, the PSP, and the PS Vita as well. But that is going away. On October 28th, uh, Sony is taking those games off of the web and mobile versions of the PlayStation Store. What that means is 
you will be able to play them. All right, you'll still be able to buy them on the uh, respective console version of the store, just not the web or mobile version. So if you want to buy a PS3 game, you're going to have to do it on the PS3's PlayStation Store, which if you've been on a PS3 recent, recently, their version of the store is not very good. It's super slow, barely works. So good luck with that. Uh, the reason I'm bringing this story up is not necessarily because of what I just said necessarily. It's really more to kind of indicate the thing that we've been talking about on this show is that these games, these digital versions of these games are not going to be available forever. And this is the first step towards that future is what they're doing here. So um, I, I felt like this was inevitable, but at the same time, they're not completely unavailable yet. But I do think by the end of this generation, these three devices in particular, you will not be able to buy games on those those stores anymore. I think they're going to shut those stores down. So, I mean, are you guys excited about the digital future? Um, you know, I was already part of it, so. I, it's the present, actually. So I thought about this more, and I... These consoles are already dead. Like, that's my opinion, so I don't really care. Okay. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, like, the I P... I, okay, the argument can be made for PS3, but Vita and the PSP are dead. Those have been dead for years. And I, yeah. I, I haven't touched those consoles in years, and I'm pretty okay. sure you haven't touched them in years. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure a lot of other people haven't touched them in years, except for, like, home brewing or hacking purposes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, I get that aspect. Now... I, 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 we, I, I'll, get you, I'll, I'll let y'all get you, uh, let you finish your argument because I know what you're about to say about in the future. So go. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's two things. It's two things. So I don't think these consoles are that big of a deal that they're going to lose, that like eventually their games aren't going to be available anymore. I don't really think anyone's going to care about that. The thing is, though, starting with this generation, the PS4 and Xbox One generation, we have games that are now... I'm not going to say age proof, but they're they're getting to the point where if you play them in 10 or 15 years, they're going to look almost as good as games you're going to be playing in 10 years, you know? And I mean, I'm saying that I know I could be wrong. I'm sure 4K is amazing. I'm sure 8K is going to be fucking incredible. I'm sure that's true. But these games are going to be very playable from a control standpoint. A lot of them are still going to be very playable games uh, mm -hmm. in the future. So when eventually when the PlayStation 4 store and the Xbox One store gets shut down and you can't buy those games anymore, the real problem becomes to me, and this is already an issue in the games industry in general, <clears> is <throat> the catalog of gaming history doesn't get upkeep. Up, there's no upkeep to it for, from anybody, really. Like, if they don't re-release the games, then the games just aren't available anymore. You're done. Like, you can't play them. And the PS3 is a perfect example of one that's going to be a big problem because the emulators don't work right now. And maybe they will in a few years, but if they never figure it out, there's going to be a humongous library of PlayStation 3 games that you will not be able to play fucking anywhere, anywhere, unless you have a physical copy of it. And I, I don't like, I feel like the game industry just doesn't give a shit about this issue, but this, this also extends though, even to this generation is when they turn off servers for certain games you're just you're just done like if you buy the game even if you buy it physical if you can't get to the servers anymore and download the patches that you need to play the game like in the way they intended then you're playing a broken game basically like it's just i don't know it's this is like it's a problem all around that i feel like not very many people talk about that i do think is actually really important and we're not going to realize how important it is until we're all like 60 you know like we're not gonna we're we're gonna look back like me you and Tiara Montreal mm -hmm. we're gonna look back at some point and some of these games we're not gonna be able to play them and we're gonna be sad about that because like dude like Fallout New Vegas you know I mean sure that's on PC so maybe you'll be able to play it I guess but like yeah. not every game's on PC you know um, let's take a PlayStation exclusive that Sony hasn't re released eighteen times like you know Twisted Metal or something from the PlayStation Three maybe somebody fucking loves that game. Or well, like Sly Cooper, I don't think they, they yeah they did do it. Did they remaster that game? They did re-release those, yeah. But okay. um, Resistance though, none of the Resistance games like have been re-released, and they may never get re-released. And it's like so, there's gonna be games that get lost in this shuffle of digital 
of digital being the future. Um, and even with physical games, it's not, you're not immune to it. If you have a disc, you know, because many games don't come with the complete game on the disc, like call of duty games are like, uh, Activision games in general are kind of infamous for this at this point where you buy a disc, there's nothing on it. You put it in and it just downloads the game. Like why did you even buy it physical? You know? Um, and eventually when they turn off that game and you can no longer download set game because the PS is network has been shut off or has been disconnected from PSN, like you're done. You're not going to be able to play that game anymore, you know? And um, it, it's, it's going to be a, it, it's going to be a minefield for the used market, obviously, but it's just like, right. I don't know. It's something that I think about sometimes that kind of makes me sad because there's plenty of games out there that this is already true for in the earlier generations that there's no way to play these games um and no one really cares but we're just like losing game gaming history you know if we don't really think about it and no i I think that's a shame so i mean yeah that's a yeah i agree with that i can i can see your unfortunately a lot of people just don't care like i mean let's just be honest a lot of people don't care um if you try to bring it up in any kind of argument on twitter reddit youtube talk to tiara they're just gonna be like well it's <laughs> <laughs> just gonna be like well, i'm digital so i don't know what the fuck to tell you man like that, that sucks for you i don't yeah, want to play i don't want to play is that even yeah. digital's not no digital's not immune to this though it doesn't matter like tiara is going to be affected by this just the same way as we are it's just like if I, you have the games you'll be able to download them right but there will I, come a day when ps3 psp and vita they're gonna even take down the ability to download games you own and once I, that's the case, these consoles are bricks. They're useless. Well, well I will say, I don't think, um, I don't think uh, that for the Xbox 360 and PS3 generation, I didn't get rid of my consoles. I don't think other people should either. I will say, I think starting this generation forward, though, I think backwards compatibility will become a staple in the gaming world because it was a huge staple for PS5 and uh, Xbox 360 yeah. um, or PS5 and uh, Xbox Series X. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> so I think moving forward now, like I think the library for the Xbox One and the PS4 is preserved. And that's what I think, in my opinion. Um now yeah for the three for the ps3 and the xbox 360 unfortunately that's just like we have to give that up you gotta buy it physical a lot of those games you can buy physical right now and still play them load them up into your xbox 360 or your ps3 and they still work um because they don't need day one patches this is, those games kind of came out before the day one patch era came out if that makes any sense um yeah <clears throat> But I, I do think a lot of the other games are still reserved. Like, there's going to be a preservation for the Xbox One and P- PS4 games because I think this is the biggest time that people got into gaming. And um, a lot of people's memories will start here and they want to, they would want to revisit these memories on the Xbox uh, One X and the PS4. Yeah. Well. But time was hell. We don't know. Yeah. Jar, do you care? Um, no. What, am I barking no. up the, barking up the wrong tree? Yeah, oh, I mean, I, I have everything digital, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I will say is, if you are uh, an owner of any of those three consoles that I mentioned or devices that I mentioned, and you, uh, there are games you want to buy, buy them soon. That's all I'm gonna say, because, uh, yeah, I don't think it's gonna happen in the next year or two that they're gonna shut the whole store down, but. I mean, it can't be that far away. Like, if they're already doing this, they're planning to, they're planning to do the next step at some point in the future. So, um, so yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh, speaking of backwards compatibility, uh, Sony has released a list of games on PlayStation Four that will not work in PS Five back compat mode, uh, and it is a short list. So this is the list. That they li- that they uh, of games PS4 only games uh, something called DWVR I don't know what that is uh, Afro Samurai 2 Revenge of Kuma Volume One <laughs> so presumably Volume Two works or is not out yet I don't know 
or if there is a volume two, if there even is one. Uh, TT Isle of Man, Ride on the Edge 2. What? <laughs> Just deal with it, exclamation point. Um, actually, this is, this is one of the few on this list that I know. Uh, Shadow Complex Remastered. Oh, really? Wow. That's yeah. Cool. Um, Robinson the Journey. We Sing. Hitman Go Definitive Edition. What's that? See? I actually know what Hitman Go is. I do too. It is a mobile port, though, so yeah, there's other places it's, you can it's, play that. Yeah, it's a, it's a mobile game. Um, Shadwen, and then Joe's Diner. That's the list of games. So that is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten games. Ten games won't work on PS5, uh, according to Sony. Uh, it's just funny to me that they have been so insistent that it's like 99% of games will work on PS5, and they wouldn't really... The reason why, I think, is they were testing every game, and they finally finished recently, I guess. And these are the 10 definitive games they know don't work on PlayStation 5 back in Pat. Like, Well, these a lot of these games, I just, I'm looking them up. Uh, so far, oh, you can keep talking, but so far, all of these games are available on PC. Okay. Yeah, so if you can't play them on PS4, you can just get them on PC, and they're not graphically intensive games. Um, yeah, just buy them on PC. I just makes me wonder, like, what's the reason that only 10, only 10 don't work, you know? Well, I would expect the number to be larger, and it would make sense. Like, there'd be some reason they were made on a specific engine or so you coded know it's a certain interesting, way, though? you know? Uh, I will say, some of these games are PS4 VR games. Really? Yes. Huh. That's weird. Uh so DWVR is a VR game. Yeah, I figured that. Um and then I believe Robinson Journey is a VR game. Yeah, it what is. About, uh, it's it's a about, VR game. What about Joe's Diner? Uh I try to look it up. It it doesn't really tell me in the synopsis and I really don't Oh, yeah, it is a VR game. Wait, hold on, hold okay. on, hold on. I think it is. No, it's just like a shitty game. Okay. Yeah. Um, it literally got like a five and on Metacritic and like a zero for the comment for the uh, for the critic score. Fair enough. Oh, actually, um, it is a it is a VR game. I'm sorry, it is. Okay. Yeah. So oh. that's but that's interesting because now we have to. In in my opinion, if I was a VR owner and I heard this on the podcast, I was like, all right, so bitch, what about my BS VR games? Like, are all those backwards compatible? Because you just named like three VR games. Yeah. I mean, they didn't name any more, so I would assume they work, but um, do, do they count those as PS4 games? Oh, okay. Please no. Yeah, it says, it playing... says PS4 games. Okay. Yeah. So they're All not right. calling them out as PSVR games. Yeah, I, I just read Aww. this adapter piece. It said, please note, please, uh, please note, playing PSVR games on the PS5 console requires the PlayStation VR headset camera, which is sold separately from the uh, console. Yeah. So, so there you go. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's like such a Sony <laughs> thing. 10 games don't work. 10 games. They just, they There's just literally. Thousands of fucking games on this console. Thousands, like probably five or six thousand. Hey man, it w- and it w- ten don't work. It will be that one person out there on an obscure Reddit site that might get super buzz, and you know it might be a slow news day for some of these YouTubers. They'll be like, "Oh well, you know what? Not all games are backwards compatible. Sony lied, and, and that would well, be that, the, that, that, that wouldn't be even the, be a fair <laughs> statement because they they did say some games aren't going to work. But, but I'm it saying just, if they if they did say if they would just went ahead and said like, yeah, games are backwards compatible. Like you can play your fucking games, like whatever. Oh, I see what you mean. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. they did that. Some people would have been on Reddit and they would have, or Reddit or other sites, and then it would have got on YouTube, and then like it would have been like I said, a slow news day, and then the caption would all said huge bold caption. I can already see it. Sony lied to uh, gamers. Not all games are PS or uh, backwards compatible, and they named these ten shitty games. So, yeah. 
Yeah, it's just the way they talked about it made it sound like more of a problem yeah. than it it is. Like, yeah, yeah, I will admit know? that, but I guess they just had to for the lawyers and stuff like that. They had they to cover their asses. We're doing exactly what you're saying. I think just yeah. covering their asses. So, um, all right, fair enough. Um, all right, we got one more Sony story here. Uh, there was a PS5 teardown video that they posted on the PlayStation blog this week. Uh, I watched small pieces of it. Uh, Montreal, I think you watched it more than uh, me. Uh, Tiara, did you check this out at all? No, I didn't even know it existed. Yeah. Uh... So, Montreal, do you want to speak to, I guess, what your takeaways were from this video? If um, so, they did have, like, a really cool, like you said, like, some kind of pseudo-liquid cooling system inside of it. Uh, liquid metal. Liquid metal. There you go. I'm sorry. Um, which I think they have on the ssd and the cpu or just one of those i i don't i don't i didn't like i said i skimmed the video so um but the biggest takeaway from this was what i thought was really funny um wasn't the actual console itself or wasn't the the breaking down of the console it was the design of the console a lot of designers like who you know do package designing and they design products and everything of that nature had a huge conversation about this and yeah. i thought it was very interesting because the way they designed the console was for airflow control. You can obviously tell by the way the console design. Uh, um, but I just don't think it should take so much effort because you need like an actual screwdriver to unhinge that fucking docking station or the docking yeah. uh, thing uh, to turn it horizontal. And then you got to, you know, hinge it back up again. Um, whereas all the other consoles, the Sony consoles, the PS2, 3, and the 4, you can just simply just flip it over. And that's that it is what it is with that. Um, so yeah. uh, I'm interested in why they kind of changed, got away from that design philosophy. I think another thing though is on the positive note, this game's gonna or the console is gonna be very uh, customizable. I can see people taking that shell off and customizing yep. it, and I can see companies actually making custom shells for the PS5. So well, just the shells because yeah, the 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 two white pieces that are on the outside they come right off they, like, they, they come just, off easy they just slide off like I, and, and i think that's why they did that because I, yeah. I think they want to get third party uh I, in my opinion i think they're trying to get third party vendors to look at that and be like okay we can start making shells for this well this is also why i part of the reason i think they went with the white because people are gonna be able to just they, they can literally paint paint it on black the panels yep. yep yeah they can paint it whatever color they want and uh there you go you've got a custom ps4 console so um yeah i think that is an, was an interesting part of the uh reveal that i saw um it is interesting that they're doing this teardown though uh in general they they must be really proud of the engineering of this thing um because yeah they've I, they've never done this before with a console yeah, uh, i don't think anyone what, has frankly so from what i hear is just it's it's an amazing console uh airflow control like it's super quiet and everything of that nature well the fans huge on it too yeah um which makes uh, sense I, I i will say xbox series x is out in the wild like not out in the wild but a lot of influencers have received it and people in the media and uh, one of the most common things i'm seeing in terms of feedback for it is that it's very like, quiet but it runs like super super hot like yep, it, was, it, that, that's exactly what i was about to get to uh yeah so a lot of people have been trying to move the um the little external hard drives you get the proprietary hard drives you get um yeah. some people say when they remove it it's not burnt but it has burned their hand like they've literally got like a little tiny you know blister burn like when you touch the stove and it's too hot or some shit like that right um so i hope this doesn't bring back the um <clears throat> the red wings of death i don't know if y'all remember I that gonna, i was gonna mention that yeah um where yeah. we had to like to fix it you had to open up your console which obviously voided your warranty but this is all they did when you send your console back for red wings of death they put thermal paste on it and that was it so um <clears throat> a lot i mean I, from what i've heard they don't have any kind of thermal paste in there or anything like that to kind of satisfy that heat reduction and it may be just because of the way the shell is designed i can see in the maybe the next two years they come out with a redesigned xbox series x if this becomes a, a huge issue when it hits uh the markets or when it hits consumers yeah so i mean we can only see but i just that's why i want to talk about the teardown because uh it led me down like a whole rabbit hole that i didn't even know what was going on with xbox and um that people are already 
people already have pre-ordered module or pre-order mods for the ps5 now for like you know little yeah. side businesses that do customization people mm-hmm. already have like pre-orders for it ready yeah. so yeah which is surprisingly a smart shrewd move from sony yeah that i would not expect out of them like the the making those panels removable and so easily removable just makes it easy to customize you know yep. super easy for a- anybody even like a regular person or a company to sell some kind of customizable plates anything like that so i think they uh, learned from nintendo move. i think they yeah. learned that from nintendo because nintendo i mean oh yeah with the new 3ds they did that that's yeah. right yep they had the, those plates on the back of it that you could just take off they were just plastic plates well even the switch like the controllers a lot of people customize their controllers and they just mix and match them so i think they learned from that i i think it's really honestly genius if they could do something with their controllers too that would be fucking cool as well oh they need a they need a design lab for the controllers man <laughs> yeah that's that's exactly they, they what they need to do oh. yeah like the xbox has yeah right 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 so um okay cool uh we will monitor that if there are any issues with the xbox series x uh if tr can get her hands on one too maybe we'll i have know some- i'm still look- i'm still looking for you i got my my emails ready so i still i'm still looking I for you both. i am too so, uh, <laughs> but they're uh the 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 consoles haven't been in stock recently there's been definitely kind of a dearth of pre-orders available so um so yeah, but we'll definitely monitor that uh, coming up to launch and then post-launch uh, with the Xbox and even the even the PS5. Even if it supposedly looks like it has good airflow, we'll see if it actually does uh, when it comes out. So, um, all right, our final story for the week is Amazon. So a few months ago, we talked about the game Crucible that Amazon was making, uh, which was a uh, I think a hero shooter or an arena shooter, one of the two of those. Uh, it had come out and then it was so bad that Amazon unreleased it and put it back into beta and it's been in beta for five months um and the game has now been canceled so um this happened uh this past week and (coughs) basically so um here we go i got the dev team's post here so i guess i'll read this um so quote essence hunters in july we moved crucible into closed beta we made a list of features we felt would enhance the player experience which we shared publicly in our roadmap and with the exception of custom games, which we expect to ship in the coming days, we completed them all. With those features shipped, our next step was to evaluate the feedback we've heard from you paired with the data we've collected to determine our path forward. That evaluation led us to a difficult decision. We will be discontinuing development on Crucible. We very much appreciate the way that our fans have rallied around our efforts, and we've loved seeing your responses to the changes we made over the last few months. All 1,000 of them. We didn't see a healthy, sustainable future ahead of Crucible. We'll be transitioning our team to focus on New World and other upcoming projects from Amazon Games. We're offering a full refund for any purchases made. Mm, You can find information on our support page, blah, blah, blah. In the next few weeks, we'll be hosting a final play test and community celebration, both in-game and in our official Discord. After that point, we'll be disabling matchmaking, although you'll still be able to play Crucible through the custom games feature. Uh, and then you know the rest of it trails tra- tra- off. So end quote. Um, so yeah. So I mean they're giving refunds, which is good, I guess. Yeah. But I think the the reason this is news though is that um, this is kind of becoming a story with Amazon, in my opinion, uh, with their game studios. Is that they've not released a game. Well, technically they have Crucible, <laughs> which they unreleased and now canceled. Um, and New World's been in development for fucking years at this point. And they've shown little teasers of it here and there, but it just seems like for all the money and ingenuity that Amazon has as a company, they just can't seem to figure this out making video games. I don't know why that is, but well, because um, video games are hard to make. I, I think yeah, they went into absolutely. it thinking it was uh, like the movie or TV industry, whereas it's not. Like it's a whole totally different ball game. Because I mean, they're. Their Amazon Prime video shit is killing. Like their books are killing, and all that shit is like really moving forward. Video games, on the other hand, are very different forms of entertainment. You actually have to have a talented team and a talented idea to market to players because people are fickle fickle about what kind of games they want to play, and there are different types of gamers out there. So it's not. I won't say TV is a blank slate or. a generic slate but it is more easier for people to get into like i can watch one episode of whatever the fuck and i don't have to be committed to it 
with a video game, it's a $60, $30, $10 investment of my money going into this. So I have to. Well, it's a bigger time investment too. An episode of a television show is 30 minutes to an hour. Yeah, exactly. Playing a video game, that is hours, (laughs) hours and hours of commitment. So especially uh, the, see, and I think the, their issue and a lot of companies issues like first time issues is, uh, like if this was a game, if this was, um, dream Haven, that is that the new blizzard company or the blizzard yeah, 2.0. Yep, okay. Yep. If this was a dream Haven. I think this would have got a lot more buzz, but this is a brand new company. Yeah. You have the Amazon behind you, but gamers really don't care about where we don't really care about the funding behind it. Right. If the studio is already replicable, then we're like, okay, cool. I think a lot of studios, they try to come out and they try to release these live service games like for the first time because they have huge backings. They don't need to do that. I think they need to release like a single player game or something of that nature. Yeah, they're being too ambitious. Like like New World's like this fucking MMO or whatever that they're trying to make. And MMO as a genre is like not even, it's barely a thing anymore. And we don't know your reputation as an MMO company right like well you it, haven't even made a game that's what i'm saying you exactly. haven't released the game so people don't even know what to expect from you and i think that's the thing with these big companies like google and amazon like coming into the gaming space microsoft was in their shoes a long time ago 20 years ago right they wanted to get into the game space but what did microsoft do obviously they release hardware but they ingrained themselves into the game into gaming culture they became a part of the culture like they didn't come in and just like fumble around and fuck around and like throw a shitload of money at garbage games, you know, like yeah. they made good shit, you know, and that's why they're still here. Well, single player shit, they made right. stuff that people can get invested into and then they start yeah. branching out into the multiplayer because a lot of people don't know Xbox Live didn't come out until 2004 or something like that. It was like late into the OG Xbox history. It didn't come out with Xbox Live um, before then. So yeah. they didn't start getting invested into that until later. Um, yeah and you need to know who you're making games for right? yeah like who's your audience for new world like who what's the audience for that game i would genuinely want to know the answer to that question because i don't think there is one I, I i'm gonna be honest with you this is how i think they pitched it i think they went into the studio or whatever they went to or the people and they're like yo we want to make this you know new world game for new colonial mmo i mean that's a cool time period which it kind of is to, to do like a fantasy type thing de- deal in because that's kind of never really been done before um and they probably also said well there are not a lot of mmos on the market we can make a lot of money off this well contrary to popular belief there are a lot of mmos still out there on the market yeah it's just not a popular genre it's not popular anymore exactly now that that's what i'm talking about though so they need people we don't know their style of mmo like who no. we don't even know if they even hired anybody from another like they need names behind these unfortunately they they need names behind these companies like i as, as much as i want to say like you know you can go out there and just make a game and you know from nobody's and you know make this game you need some kind of name or something like that because that's well, just how amazon the game, game studios is not a good name like these guys are called they call themselves the crucible team they don't have like a studio name yeah you know? but even so. if you had the crucible team what if they had someone that was like well we have the you know the lead designer of fucking halo 2 he did he did the lead the, the multiplayer design for that like people were like oh okay so you know halo 2 was a good game and now we they have the lead designer behind that well, that's okay. true for a lot of startups too yeah they always they always do that when they start a new company like a new studio pops up Ex- you always hear that that exactly the former former director for some big ass game is part of the studio like, and i feel like oh, you need that yeah right you need yeah. that experience yeah you need that like you need to like yeah for the mmo right what, what the people Will Dreamhaven had it did this right? Everyone would be shitting bricks like, "Oh shit, new what's it called? New World is coming out!" Like, and that's Dreamhaven. The old people from World of War or uh, of Wild, they're doing that shit. And Blizzard, like, this is Blizzard 2.0 game. Like, that's what they need. We just heard Amazon Game Studios, New Haven. We got a trailer, and we're like, all of us like, "Oh, the trailer looks cool. That's a cool time period to do it in." I guess. Like, and then Crucible came out like. Oh, it looks really cool. But now if they had said former Destiny makers, uh, we got the former Destiny people to, to do Crucible. Oh, really? I like Destiny. Right. 
cool, let me play this game and let me try it out. Let me look at it some more. Well, and I think they also kind of fail at like building hype for these games. Like New World is a game we've seen one teaser of and we've never even seen gameplay of it. We've not seen screenshots of it. We've seen nothing of it, which indicates to me that there is not anything good to show. <laughs> you think they'd want to show it at some point. You know? I honestly think whoever the head of the game studio is is not a gamer. Uh, they haven't or they don't have to be a gamer per se but like the, the project managers or whoever they don't know the they, industry. they don't know the industry they hired a, a bunch of new people which is cool i'm glad all these people have jobs but you still need tenure like you still need to let us know like it's if they even tenure you need an understanding of the industry you're in and the markets you're trying to penetrate yeah you know? yeah and and that i think is something that amazon's kind of failing at so far is is and which is funny because yeah, usually, usually they have like like surgical precision in entering marketplaces. You know, like they enter them in the perfect way. But this is one area that it's just it's different. You know, this isn't like a retail thing. You can't just like create a product and put it out there and it's got Amazon's name on and everyone's gonna fucking love it. Like you got to make a good game. You know, like or, or otherwise you're not gonna get a community. You know, you're not gonna get an audience. So. I don't know. It's just interesting. I mean, I, we've kind of been following Amazon for a while, and I, I'm going to keep putting these stories in here as we learn more about some of their games because I am genuinely, like, curious. I want to see what comes of this because, to me, right now, my feeling is that we're not going to get anything out of this. There will not be a game released by Amazon Game Studios. That's my feeling. At, they, at they, the they need somebody else. They need, like, a big name behind them. They need like a Kojima. They needed something. They need something. They need somebody like that. Yeah, because yeah, dude, couldn't you see them canceling New World in like two years, and then they just clean house at Amazon Game Studios? Yeah, well, and see, start over from scratch. You know, and, like, that, and that's what I'm saying, right? They could easily, easily. They don't have to acquire them, but they have a partnership with the people making Pantheon. People. Like, oh, Pantheon? Oh, the people making Pantheon, they also made EverQuest. Oh, shit. Okay, so this is where we're going with this. Like, they could have did stupid shit like that. Like, I just thought about that on top of my head. I'm not even a fucking marketing interior person. Like, they could have done that shit. It's just, they're not... I don't know what it is with companies in video games. They just don't think. Yeah. So I think the only reason Xbox got big, to be honest with you, is because they had Bill Gates. Everyone knows who Bill Gates is. And they're like, Microsoft, Bill Gates, console? Let's see where this goes. But they and, were a tech company, right? Amazon's not a tech company. As much it, as they've gotten in that realm, they're not known as a tech company, yeah. you know, publicly really that much. So, um, and I, I think they've kind of maybe went in this, went at this in reverse. Like they should have started publishing, like publish some small games, you know, yeah. Uh, pick some indies that look interesting to you that you think are going to do well, that you believe in, that you want to invest in and, and do that, you know, and then, and, and publish a few games get your feet wet and then maybe start working on acquiring talent from known quantities, you know? Yeah. That, that's um, the problem with studio. Google. That's the problem with Google and uh, Amazon though. They don't think like that. They just want to jump in head first and be like, okay, we got it. Like we made right, all this yeah. money everywhere else. Cause we just jumped in head first. Like mm-hmm. not with video games, bro. I'm sorry. Cause you're right. Precision, precision with like movies or not. Yeah. Movies, TV, music, everything good Dude, video the kindle game. fucking aws like their cloud stuff yeah like, everything like, they, like they've jumped into markets that you would never have expected you know like them them being one of the powerhouses of the technology cloud is crazy like that seems insane if you said that 10 years ago you would have like what the fuck are you talking about yeah like no microsoft's gonna be there google's gonna be there you know and, and i mean microsoft is there and i think google is to a degree too but it's like Amazon's kind of the big player at this point, you know, in the, in that space. Like they are a titan along with Microsoft, you know. Yeah. Um, so they can be good at this. I believe they can. I just whether it's the leadership they have, the talent they have, or just them being too ambitious. I mean, making an MMO is one of your first games. Is a that's unless that's you big know yikes. how to make MMOs already. That is a big ask. It's a so. big yikes. All right. That is going to be it for us, guys. Uh, do you guys have any uh, any other things you want to talk about before we go today? Uh, nope. I am going to try to give out, or I am going to try to give that uh, Baldur's Gate look because I've seen a lot of Baldur's people Gate play 3. it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I just, dude, I want to play that game too. But um, the fact that it's like got, they said it's like 20% of the game or 25% of the game. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like, <laughs> this game's not going to be ready for like three years to play. Like, what the, like, fucking, I, I don't understand why they released this in early access at this point. It's so. Oh, I didn't know I that. Know. I thought it was a full game. So. Yeah, no, no, it's not a full game at all, dude. It's not even close to content complete. <laughs> like, I, my numbers might be off, but it was somewhere in that range, like 20 to 30%. So, um, and that is from the developers. They said that. You okay. Know, that was not a guesstimate from someone else. Like, I'm pretty sure they said that. So, I, like, that game sounds intriguing, but, or, <laughs> I mean, I love, like, Baldur's Gate is an awesome IP, but, and it's in good hands, but, you know, like, give me a game before you charge me 60 bucks for it you know yeah yeah like so um all right well i guess we're gonna call it there um if you guys enjoyed this episode please like the episode review the show and subscribe to the show on whatever feed you are listening to it on and if you could please share it with your friends if you'd like to interact with any of the three of us on twitter you can do so at i trap for the hokage for montreal that is the number four at the word tr is at victorian jedi I am at ThunderNerd01, and the show is at The Player's Take. Uh, if you'd like to send us a question, you can do so on Twitter, or you can email us at theplayerstake01 at gmail.com. Uh, send us some more nicknames or whatever else you want to discuss, whether it's the new consoles, games you're playing, anything like that. We will talk about it here on the show. Um, and, yeah, that's going to be it for us, guys. We hope you enjoyed this one, and we will see you on the next one. All right, bye.